In the last few months, there have been several major discoveries, and quite exciting discoveries, in regards to unusual exoplanets or exoplanetary observations. New things we've seen or learned about various planets that to some extent helped us understand something we didn't know before or helped us see something we've never seen. And although in just the last year, because of the James Webb discoveries, there actually have been quite a few, I wanted to focus on five major ones, the ones I didn't really get to mention in some of the other videos, but the ones that are sort of really important. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries in regards to various exoplanets, strange exoplanets, or unusual discoveries about planets nobody really expected to make that to some extent surprise scientists. And let's actually start with something that we've briefly discussed in one of the previous videos, in regards to one of the most extreme planets out there. The planet that defies all explanations. Or I guess technically, it's a brown dwarf, a planetary object. But in this case, this brown dwarf really seems to be quite extreme. The object that was recently discussed in this paper you can find in the description. And though the scientists do refer to it as irradiated Jupiter, in reality it's actually much more massive. It's at least 70 masses of Jupiter, almost definitely making this a brown dwarf. And what makes this brown dwarf so strange is of course its temperature. Nearly 8000 Kelvin, 7700 Celsius or 14000 Fahrenheit. That is the hottest planetary object we've ever seen anywhere. It's at least 2000 Kelvin above the temperature of the surface of the Sun. And by being so ridiculously hot, we obviously have no idea what's even happening on the surface here, what sort of atomic or molecular composition it might have, or, more importantly, how it even got into this position where it became so extremely hot. But the reason it's hot is because of its partner, a low-mass white dwarf, approximately 40% the mass of the Sun, with the surface temperature of 37,000 Kelvin. And this is actually interesting because these types of systems were originally predicted to exist and were predicted to contain these super hot objects. So in some sense this is actually a confirmation of this prediction. But there are obviously still quite a lot of unanswered questions about the origins of this system. This also beats the previous record holder, Kelt 9b, by at least 3000 degrees as well. Kelt 9b is a planet we've discussed previously, it was discovered a few years back, but it's completely incomparable to what was recently found around the White Dwarf. But we'll talk more about this once there are some updates. Next on the list is something slightly different. And here I just have to show you what it basically is. It doesn't really look like anything special, except for the fact that this is the longest observation of a planet orbiting a star. These images were taken over a 17-year period. And all of this started with the first image that became the first ever directly imaged planet ever found. This planet is basically so bright and so extremely large that it was even visible with some of the older telescopes, originally discovered in 2003. And here it is, a planet still, even though it's approximately 12 masses of Jupiter. It's actually at the limit where it should become a brown dwarf, but it's definitely not a brown dwarf, and it's just a really massive giant. And what's intriguing here is of course the fact that we can so easily see it's orbiting the star, even though it's 63 light years away from planet Earth. In this case, this time-lapse shows us approximately 75% of the entire orbit. One single orbit most likely takes approximately 23 years. But this system is exciting for a lot of other reasons as well. This is actually a really young system, approximately 20 million years old, and so it's actually directly showing us how early star systems evolve. It still contains a relatively large dust disk, and there are actually two planets here, one about 10 astronomical units away, and one approximately 3 astronomical units. The planet that we can visually see is Planet C, the much larger world located in the system. But this is not the only such time-lapse created by the scientists behind the study, because over the last few years, Jason Wang that created these videos has definitely perfected the technique. Here you see HR8799 with four exoplanets, showing us the 12 years of orbit. And so it's really just a matter of time and a matter of more observations before we start seeing even bigger and more impressive time lapses of essentially distant planets orbiting distant stars. In some sense, this is just the beginning. At the moment, 17 years is definitely the record. But when it comes to direct observations, there are of course certain mysteries that weren't really resolved until recently. And here's one such mystery when it comes to protoplanetary disks. Now, most disks, as you probably know, usually look like this. 
Quite a few have been detected in the last few years, and though sometimes different, they usually are somewhat similar. They do contain rings, they're more or less circular, and there are certain locations where you can already see planets form. But sometimes we see something like this. Something containing very unusual arms. Arms that resemble something similar to what you see here. This is probably the most iconic of these systems, the protoplanetary disk known as MWC758. Now here at first it wasn't clear what's creating these formations, because they basically resembled a kind of a miniature galaxy, but a lot of recent simulations and recent observations have most likely solved this mystery once and for all. It seems to be caused by a giant planet, but a planet on the outskirts circling the protoplanetary disk. And so here, at a distance of just over 500 light years away from planet Earth, despite this gas giant being somewhat difficult to see, it was finally discovered. Only visible in some frequencies, because apparently it's just extremely red. Almost impossible to see in most frequencies of light. But it finally solves the mystery of unusual spiral-armed protoplanetary disks. But when it comes to more unusual star systems, the systems whose existence was not certain before, but actually whose existence was more or less made possible through science fiction, there's one type of a star system that we finally confirmed once and for all. The so-called Tatooine planets. Essentially planets around binary stars. But more officially they're known as circumbinary planets. And the thing is, mathematically it wasn't clear if this should be possible. Because of the way binary stars disturb the star system, there are actually only very few locations where you can maybe assume a somewhat permanent orbit. But even there, the orbit might not actually be very permanent for a very long time. Nevertheless, in the last decade or so, 15 circumbinary planets have already been confirmed, with the first such system ever discovered being Kepler-16b. This was discovered by the Kepler telescope in 2011. But only one such system was known to host multiple planets, Kepler-47. Now here we had one of the planets even in the habitable zone of the star system, which was already super exciting. But looks like now we've found another one. The system previously known as the Tess Object of Interest 1338, and the system that's now known as Bebop. Bebop stands for Binaries Escorted by Orbiting Planets. Basically the project whose main purpose was to find these objects. And so here we have this relatively small gas giant, maybe 65 times the mass of planet Earth, or about 20% the mass of Jupiter, along with the second planet that's about 22 times planet Earth's mass, or basically kind of similar to Neptune. And once again both orbit a binary system. And so because technically now circumbinary planets have been confirmed, figuring out exactly how they form and what happens around these planets is the obvious next step. At the moment it's very hard to predict exactly how this happens and what sort of planets these even are. Nobody actually knows what properties they would have, or if they would be similar to anything that we usually have in a typical star system, or maybe something completely different. But anyway, moving on to the last discovery, in this case probably presenting the biggest mystery for a lot of planetary scientists. The discovery of a planet 260 light years away from planet Earth that seems to be a gas giant just a little bit smaller than Saturn. But what makes this gas giant really strange is its very very tight orbit with essentially a red dwarf. Now, by themselves, none of these objects are unusual, but together, in this orbit, it really has no explanation. A single orbit here takes approximately 1.5 days, and there are currently no possible formation pathways that can explain either the existence of this somewhat large giant in such a tight orbit with a red dwarf, or more intriguingly, where any of this material could have come from, because red dwarfs are not expected to have enough gas to produce these massive gas giants. And that's because when it comes to stars, the more massive the star, the more massive we expect the planets to form. And so a sun-like object might be able to produce a Jupiter-like planet. However, a typical red dwarf that's maybe about 10 to 30% the mass of the sun is just going to have much less mass around it. Which is why most of the planets we've discovered around a typical red dwarf so far have been terrestrial in nature. But once in a while there's always that exception. Some kind of a, an unusual gas giant. But this one by far is the most extreme. As you can see right here, it's about 75% the radius of Jupiter, and it's technically about one-fifth the radius of the star. But because it also orbits so close to the star, it really makes no sense whatsoever how it got here, where the material came from, how it was possibly created, and whether this planet was actually created in the star system, or maybe just came from somewhere else. Now that last part is very, very unlikely. 
The observations so far suggest that the chemical composition is extremely similar to the star. But further observations using orbital parameters potentially discovered another hidden planet much farther away that maybe influenced the orbit of the larger Jupiter-like object. Alternatively, this could also be a result of maybe a collision with something smaller previously, which could be revealed through the chemical analysis of the upper atmosphere. By detecting different types of elements, such as for example nickel, it can be established that maybe there was a collision that basically reduced the orbit of a much farther object that used to orbit on the outskirts. Either way though, it's now officially referred to as the Forbidden Planet. But I guess that term has been used before for a lot of other planets that were eventually explained. Nevertheless, still a mystery, at least as of 2023. But I guess for now, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention about unusual exoplanets discovered in the last few months. We'll be discussing more in some of the future videos, and you can actually find even more of these exoplanets that were previously unexplained in the entire playlist about this somewhere in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirts you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.